Hello everyone, good morning or good afternoon whenever you're watching this. Um, this is going to be the January setup of my bullet journal. My name is Noah if you're new here and thank you for hanging out. If you're not new here, thank you for coming back and still thank you for hanging out. Um, I am in a Archer and Olive bullet journal. It's one of the plant-based bride collaboration notebooks. I'm sorry if you hear noises, the house is alive around me. Not literally, there are people doing things as well as animals, but there are noises such as life. Um, it is the olive branch version on the green linen. It is 160 pages. It is somewhat covered in cat hair already. Um, and I started it in January of this year. So it is a pretty chilly day today, but I have my coffee here and my mug have a candle lit and I have my pens in my thrifted mug that I love so much and I'm getting ready to get started. Last month I did a speed paint style or you know time lapse but I really didn't like the way that looked in the end so we're going to try something different. It's still going to be a voiceover um, but it's going to be more of a real-time clips type thing. I'm going to be listening to my audiobook, The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky by Mackenzie Lee. It's a novella. It is only two-ish hours long, so I should be able to finish it today. Um, it is part of the Gentleman's Guide series. It is a YA um, series, but I never read the third one in the series and I never read this novella either. So I'm using Hoopla, and if you're interested, um, I can link to it in my bookshop.org affiliate link down below. But yes, that's what that what I'm going to be listening to. So that's everything that I think you need to know right now. Um, I will share my thoughts with you as we go. As for the tools I'm using this month, they are the same as those I used last month. I'm using my Oto Graphic Liners again. They are a nice ballpoint waterproof pen, and I'm using the sizes 03, 05, 10, and 005 primarily this month. Um, I have previously penciled everything out before we've gotten started, and I will be going through then and erasing all of my guidelines later using your standard eraser. I am going for primarily a inking and cross-hatching type style in this notebook. It feels nice and simple even though it really isn't nearly as minimalist or quick as I thought it would be. I am definitely enjoying it so far both last month and this month. One thing that I did start adding that I didn't expect was craft paper. I didn't add any in the setup for this month but that doesn't mean there won't be some later in this month and I use that to add sort of a pop of color and texture throughout my spreads. When setting up my bullet journal for the year I made a spread for my five star reads, but a month later, and while I have been reading, I haven't really had any five star reads to put on it, and I'm kind of sad I can't put the other reads anywhere. So I decided to create a spread that will encompass all of my reads, or maybe it's just for the one to four star ones. I haven't decided yet. I have included spaces in the spread for the title of the book, the author, my start and end dates, and notes. I really wish that I had included a space for format like I did in my five star spread from the beginning of the year, but I suppose I can put that under notes and then just remember when I create the next reading spread because I am sure, or at least I hope, I will fill this spread up pretty quickly. The quote I included for this spread in lieu of a title is, reading is the journey of those who cannot take the train. Francis de Corset. For decoration, I added in a simple linear mountain range to continue the theme of the Appalachian Mountains, which is the theme that I'm going to be carrying across the entire journal. For February, I decided to do the theme of fossils. Each month, I'm choosing a different theme that has to do with nature, particularly the nature that I live in. For the cover, I decided to draw a trilobite, the Phacops rana, which is apparently the state fossil for Pennsylvania. I also included another quote. There are fossils of seashells high in the Himalayas. What was and what is are two different things. Rebecca Solnit.
The next page is my monthly calendar spread. I like to start my weeks on Mondays, so that's what I did. I kept my decorative drawing smaller this time and added an area for notes and events, which I had wished for, but ended up not having the space for last month. The fossil I drew for this spread is a coned type brachiopod. Here there is a blank page just before my weeklies begin, and I'm not sure what I will end up using it for. I'm thinking it will just be a brain dump page for February, but I haven't decided yet. As for my weeklies, I am doing the rolling weeklies design created by the plant-based bride. For the first month, it has worked really well, so I'm going to keep using it. I was so excited because I thought this would be the first time I would draw out the days of the week on the left without messing it up. But alas, I misstated Saturday. As for the drawings for this week, I drew a peacock terrace or fern and a hollow third, which is a sea cucumber. I tried to include lots of texture to show the slight variations and marks that you see in these fossils without it being overly simplified line art. I chose this theme for this month because fossils were a part of my childhood. I grew up in rural Pennsylvania in a different part of the state from where I live now. My father's property was on a hill that was in part made out of shale, which is a sedimentary rock that is easy to split and my siblings and I spent many hours digging up and finding tons of fossils, mostly of seashells, like the one I drew on the monthly calendar spread. I decided not to include the spending or budgeting spread in my journal again. Instead of just using my notebook, my girlfriend and I have decided that we will budget together in a single dedicated notebook. This way, it will be easier for both of us to be aware of what we are spending as well as our shared and separate financial goals. With the information in my notebook that I alone use, it was either only going to be a tool for me or I was going to have to add in all of her stuff or she could come and get my notebook out of my office and do it. But it was really going to be too complicated for us to really bother with realistically. With this second dedicated notebook, it can live in a communal part of our house like our living room, dining room, our kitchen. The budgeting spread I decided to use in January, I didn't really even touch anyway. The spending spread I loved, so I'll be recreating it again in our new journal. It is again a spread created by the plant-based bride with some minor modifications. If you want to check that out, you can check my previous bullet journal video. I think those are my only deletions from last month to this month, and the reading spread is the only new addition to my journal, which means we're all caught up and now at the end of the video. I would love to hear what you are doing in your bullet journals or other planning systems this month. What do you think of doing a year-long theme like this that is so related to where I live? Have you ever done something like this? Are there any other spreads you think I might like if I tried? If you like to watch art studio vlogs, bullet journals, and more, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on that bell, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!